Hey what's up guys, in this video I will be showing you how to make your own pet feed at home using an old digital watch as the timer. So sit back, relax and let's get started. I used the Autodesk Kegel software to design the schematic and board for the project. It's a very professional software with a massive component library and even allows for installing new components which can be easily found online. I thereafter printed the PCB layout onto magazine paper and started to clean the copper laminated board. I used a rough sponge to scrub off any dirt or oil so that the toner will stick well to the copper. After I dried the copper board, I placed it on the magazine paper facing the printed side and I taped it to a piece of paper. Afterwards, I folded the paper in half and began to iron on it. The iron should be increased to the maximum heat and the steam turned off. I placed the iron on the side of the magazine paper and ironed it for approximately 5 minutes. I gently removed the copper board from the folded paper and placed it in water. Be careful, it will be very hot. After letting the magazine paper soak up the water, I began to gently peel off the magazine paper from the copper board. Take your time in peeling it off. After I wiped it dry, I used a permanent marker to fill any gaps in the traces that may have formed when peeling off the magazine paper. I used ferric chloride to edge the copper board. Please use caution when handling ferric chloride. The copper starts to dissolve off little by little. The etching process may take approximately 10 minutes. It's almost complete. When it's complete, I rinsed it off in water and wiped it dry. I thereafter used the drill to punch in the necessary holes in the PCB.
After drilling all the holes, I use steel wool to scrub off the toner, revealing the copper traces underneath. I used it on the other side since the drilling process may leave it rough. I wiped it off and it revealed a really nice printed circuit board. The list of necessary parts along with the wiring diagram will be stated in the description. I added some flux to aid in soldering and thereafter soldered the components. I also added in some headers to the PCB. I thereafter moved on to modifying the servo. The servo cannot usually turn continuously. They are usually controlled with a microcontroller to adjust the position. I will desolder the wires from the circuit inside the servo and connect it directly to the motor. I also disassemble the gears to remove the end stop which prohibits the servo from rotating continuously. But for some reason my servo did not have an end stop so I put everything back in place. Now it's time for the watch. You will need a watch which has the alarm function and which does not beep every hour. I first tested out the alarm function and thereafter checked which button turns off the alarm. Seems like the button for the light turns off the alarm in this specific watch. After getting that done, I moved on to disassembling the watch. These two contacts power the PSO buzzer and we will need these terminals to trigger our circuit. The buttons work by touching the common contact to the terminals on the circuit of the watch. After unscrewing the battery holder, I broke off the common contacts which acts as the buttons.
I soldered in a wire to the plate that I can use as a common contact. I soldered in another wire to the terminal which connects to the PSO buzzer. Thereafter I separated the display from the circuit so that I can solder in wires to its button contacts. I soldered in three push button switches to a piece of dot board which will be used to change the settings of the watch. I connected one terminal of all three switches to the common contact of the watch. Afterwards connected the buttons of the watch to the individual switches. The battery plate was soldered to the common terminal of the switches and the terminal for the PSO buzzer was connected to extending wires. I also connected a wire to the alarm disconnect switch which we found out to be the button for the light of the watch. I thereafter screwed the watch back in place. I soldered in two wires to the left and middle pin of a 10k potentiometer. I also soldered in a 9 volt battery connector to the PCB. The potentiometer was soldered to the PCB as well. The alarm signal input was connected to the first thyristor and the common contact to the ground of the PCB. The rear alarm turn off wire was connected to the collector of the optocoupler and the emitter was connected to the ground. Thereafter I soldered in some wires which would connect to a micro switch. I added a mini slide switch in between the PCB and the micro switch so that the feeder can be turned off when needed. I used a plastic casing in which I cut out the necessary openings beforehand. I inserted the servo into the necessary opening and screwed it in place. I used hot glue to stick the watch to the casing. Afterwards, I screwed in the buttons of the watch to the casing. All three buttons seemed to work perfectly. 
I connected the servo to the PCB and installed the potentiometer and the slide switch to the casing. Afterwards I passed the wires for the micro switch through the small opening near the servo and screw the PCB onto the casing. I fixed a plastic clamp onto the bottom cover of the casing so that the feeder can be mounted on an aquarium. I placed a knob on the potentiometer so it's easier to adjust it. I trimmed the wires for the micro switch and soldered it to the normally closed contacts. I used a plastic container to store the food which is to be dispensed by the feeder. I made several openings as shown here each for different functions. I used a piece of plastic as a divider to which I also made an opening for the food to pass through. I used hot glue to stick it to the container. I also used another piece of plastic as an adjustable cover in order to limit the amount of food which falls out of the feeder. I used a nut and bolt to hold the adjustable cover to the container. I used hot glue to stick the nut in place. Afterwards, I stuck the arm of the servo to the middle opening of the container with hot glue. I added a nut and bolt to the opening on the edge. This will be used to trigger the micro switch. I thereafter secured in the container to the servo. On the initial test, the servo keeps running without stopping after one turn. So we need to adjust the bolt which is supposed to trigger the micro switch. It seems to trigger it properly on the second test. I added the cover of the container and tested it again. It seems to work perfectly. I went ahead and labeled the on off switch and the buttons which control the clock. Turning the potentiometer we can adjust the speed at which the servo rotates. I added some fish food and turned the feeder on. Afterwards I tested out the timer function as well. It works perfectly. We hope you liked the video and learned something from it. Feel free to comment your thoughts below and remember to subscribe for more videos.